Hey guys, Speed here, and today I'm gonna be going over how to counter Life Stealer. Yes, I understand the hero's broken. Midas is broken. Life Stealer's broken. Just the, the combination of the two are absolutely insane. So I'm gonna be talking about in this video how you should counter Life Stealer. Obviously, I'm coming from Team Liquid's perspective. They are a professional Dota 2 team. So you might be like, hey, I'm not a professional Dota 2 team. I'm not even a player on a professional Dota 2 team. What can I do? Counter Life Stealer. And I'm going to talk about the individual heroes and plays that can be made to counter life stealer now before we hop into the main content of this video i just want to let you guys know that you can check out guides just like this one made by top tier pros and have over thousands of different options over at gameleap.com now let's get into the main video so first let's note how team liquid counter picks the life stealer their first two opener to counter it is Ursa and Earth Spirit. What I want to note is that you might find this a little weird only because Earth Spirit is a strength hero whose disables aren't that instant, but overall it's not particularly good control against Life Stealer. However, what it is good against is killing the people around life stealer and that is one of the main ways you need to play against this hero. If you're a position 4 hero, a position 1 hero, you should be considering picking heroes that have the ability to get to the back lines. Right, Ursa and Earth Spirit are both very good at that. Now, second, I just want to mention that Ursa is one of the best life stealer counters simply because Fury Swipes counters him in the laning stage. In addition, Overpower plus Fury Swipes in combination with your ultimate is plenty of damage to kill life stealer at almost any stage of the game. So just having this utility gives you a nice option against life stealer and is probably one of the main reasons why they picked Ursa. And next up, hero that I think is controversial against Life Stealer, it is Darkseer. So I've had a couple friends actually tell me that they think Life Stealer is a counter to Darkseer. And to that, I would say a little bit, right? Life Stealer will sustain the lane. You can't pressure him out of lane. However, what Darkseer does great against Life Stealer is what I mentioned previously. He runs around and kills the people other than Life Stealer. Pretty much he kites out the Life Stealer. That's the main thing. Kiting Life Stealer. Surge is one of the best abilities, and you can ignore him by surging your teammates around and cutting his wave. You don't have to approach him in the lane. And yes, he will get free farm, but Darkseer naturally buys Pipe and Crimson. Let's move on. First, let's check out how they approach the Lifestealer lane, because this is a lane that is definitely not too easy, right? It's a hero that naturally has a lot of sustain, has built-in magic immunity, and Darkseer and Earth Spirit are purely magical damage. So what we're going to want to pay attention to is how they approach the lane. First off, you'll notice that they don't even approach the lane at all, right? This is important to note, right? They try to dodge it. And is this something you can do in your pubs? My answer is yes. However, in my opinion, it actually takes some skill to be able to learn how to communicate effectively to get your team to rotate. You notice this is one way you can play against the Life Stealer, right? Instead, they send the Ursa against him, and this is how you can get good lanes, right? GH is a feeder, so as I switch over, he feeds. That's not what you want to do, but what's important to know is they get the matchup you want. So if you're picking Ursa as a safe laner to counter the Life Stealer, you should ask your team to allow you to go to the top lane, or you should mark it and just pick um, it as an off laner. It works in both ways. So what I want to note next in the landing stage is that, okay, it's around two minutes in and Life Stealer is now porting bottom. What does the Ursa do? Does he continue to yesing? No, he makes it his main priority to follow the Life Stealer. If you're going to pick Ursa and you don't chase the Life Stealer around, your pick is almost nullified, right? Your hero is not particularly good against Life Stealer in the mid game, right? You do have kill potential. However, with Radiance, you're going to miss and he has a phase boost, so he's going to outrun you. It's just... It's not that great until you have like four or five items, but at that point, Life Stealer is going to have defensive items as well. So what I'm saying is you really want to try to get against them in the laning stage, and that is one way you can counter Life Stealer by putting a hero like Razor or Ursa against them in the lane. Now you notice that the Life Stealer is still farming, right? And the Ursa can't do much about it. And this might seem problematic. However, what you want to note is that this matchup gets better as levels go on. Uh, a lot of matchups against Life Stealer are the other way around. When Life Stealer gets levels, he gets more levels and feast, is harder to kill, and zones out a lot more effectively. However, this is not one of those matchups. It's actually a different matchup in the sense where Life Stealer can do fine early, but not that well as, as the lane goes on. So what I want to show you guys next is that you can use Overpower for a few different ways, right? I'm, I'm going to pause here. People have this misconception that Overpower is only a offensive spell where it actually is one of the best denying spells in the game, right? Because you can throw off your opponents, right? Life Stealer thinks this is out of deny range, or at least he can't get both denies, and therefore he gets both. And this is great, right? You increase your attack speed, and because it is a long cooldown, you actually can't really spam it as much to apply pressure. So it's actually quite good at um, getting denies, in my opinion. And for that, you should consider using it in that regard. 
So I'm skipping way ahead, and that's only because I don't want to go into the laning stage too much. Pretty much just how the matchup works is if you get a even lane, uh, you can zone them out. However, if you don't, you might just get zoned out. So uh, I want to move on to the mid game, and you're going to notice a fight going on here, right? And what's also important to note is that they're taking fights previous to the 20 minute mark, at least they were trying to. And the purpose of this is you're looking to exploit the timing in which Lifestealer is at his weakest point. And this is previous to Radiance, right? The hero is very kiteable. And the main reason you go Radiance is simply for the fact that you don't want to get kited. So how do you counter Lifestealer in that regard? You have to take fights. You have to look to pressure towers. That's why push strats can be quite effective against Lifestealer because they force his objectives and the hero is a complete non-factor, complete non-factor until he is Radiance. Obviously you might argue that uh, if he gets ahead, phase boots is plenty to do damage, especially with the Sacred Relic, but as we addressed in the drafting stage, they picked heroes where this is not the case, right? If we click on Darkseer, he has a mech and maxed out Surge, right? That's plenty. He has max Rolling Boulder, or sets a Blink Basher. Um, Miracle obviously doesn't have defensive items, but once again, what's, uh, what you just want to note is that they have the items, such as mech, and the skills to disengage from the Ursa previous to Radiance, so... To make it clear, you want to fight previous to the Radiance timing. Okay, so now we're skipping once again very far ahead, and the purpose is I just want to go over the fights and just show off how good Liquid's team comp is actually uh, at dealing with the other heroes and kind of ignoring the Life Sealers. So you notice what their team comp has is the ability to burst the enemy and not have the fight drag out. Dragged out fights against Radiance Life Stealer is a mess, right? You just get ticked down and he slowly kills all your heroes. So you notice here. The difference is, as we go slow, I just want to slowly go through this fight, is that they initiate, they force the Viper BKB. This is actually so important. Why is this so important? Because how you want to play against Life Stealer is to kill off his teammates. So if his teammates die, you can deal with them. You notice a huge vac wall combo. Obviously, this is Liquid just being amazing. But right, they kill off the support. Beta BKB, they kill the Viper. They kill the Bat Rider. Then they kill the Elder Titan. And look who's last alive with full HP, full mana. Full HP, full mana. Lifestealer, right? And you might argue that this is Liquid being the better team. And to some extent, yes. The, the great play cutting the BKB. Great vac wall. Nice rock. Good fatal bonds. Just overall amazing spell casting. Even Miracle, right? Gotta give him some credit. But what's important to note is the fact that Lifestealer ended the fight with full HP, full mana. Ursa did not touch him. And Volker did not cast spells on him. You ignore him. And this is sometimes a harsh reality that you have to ignore the hero that feel like, it feels like he's going to kill your entire team. But when you're playing against Life Sealer, you really need to try to kill everyone else first. So in this upcoming clip, I want to talk about an exception. So remember how I stressed about focusing his teammates, right? This is of course the case. However, you might have been thinking during that, what if there's an exception? What if he overextends? Do I still jump him? I want to note that it depends on your heroes, right? If you have the correct heroes to jump on him, do so, right? If you have an Ursa and he's vastly out of position, you can consider jumping him. However, the majority of time, if you jump Lifestealer, he'll rage, open wounds, and turn on you. So, in this fight, they actually do end up jumping him. Why does this work, right? You have to note the positioning of the two team comps. One is completely disengaging, and you notice he's at the tier 2 tower, separated. In addition, he committed rage previously, right? This is the only time in which you can commit on a Lifestealer, when his spells are down, right? But Matumba Man is still able to pick up the kill, right? They kill off the Infest Carrier, and that is the only time in which you should be looking to jump a Life Stealer, right? When he's far out of position, you have the correct heroes to kill him, and his rage is down. It's sometimes hard to keep track of all these things, right? Or even notice them, right? You have to pay attention, right? If he has rage there, he can rage, disengage, and avoid a lot of the magical damage coming out from the Invoker. And then the kill wouldn't have happened, they would have burned their Ursa BKB, and it would have been a lost fight. That is why it is so important to keep track of things against Lifestealer. The hero doesn't have a lot of weaknesses when he has Midas Radiance and a bunch of armor items. However, with the right heroes, specifically Ursa, you can kill him. So in this clip here, they just killed the Viper and they're going high ground. It's much later into the game, but pay attention to how Matoma Man takes his fight. The fight breaks out, he has the option to jump the Elder Titan, the Bat Rider, or the Life Stealer. And what does he do? He doesn't pick any of them. He understands how important of a kill this Dazzle is. And because of that, he's able to pick up a high prior kill, right? If he jumps anyone else, they'll get graved, they'll get healed, and he'll get kited out. So instead, he picks the support, right? This is how you need to play once again against Life Stealer, but also as an Ursa, because often you might be playing Ursa against Life Stealer simply because it's a nice counter. 
Once again, completely ignoring the Life Stealer, picking off everyone. This is why Ursa is so good against Life Stealer. It's not even because you really provide kill potential. You notice right here, you can't even hit him. You can't even hit the guy. He has an MKB. It's because you can kill everyone else around him and kite him out, right? If Life Stealer goes on you, you can just enrage. It's so sad that Life Stealer is just walking around helpless, just watching as his team dies. And before we end up this video, as Liquid takes the throne gloriously, Let's look at the the items coming out. We have a BKB and a Greaves from the Darkseer, right? This makes it very hard for the Life Stealer to do any damage. Next up, we have a Lincolns. This is for the Bat Rider, kind of uh, a non-factor actually. It's not too good against Life Stealer. What is better against Glimmer and Force Staff if you were support? But clearly, Kuroko, Kuroki preferred the Lincolns here. And then we have another Lincolns, but a Blink Dagger is the more important one. He did have a Yules earlier, which is a great item against Life Stealer as well. You're looking to kite out the rage duration, and an invoker against life slitter can be really bad if you don't have BKB or Yules, simply because the rage duration is then plenty to kill you off. And finally, the last item, as Liquid actually ends up dying, is a Shiva's Guard on the Earth Spirit. This does a few things, right? It gives you vision of the heroes that you want to actually be killing, which is not the life healer, and it allows you to kite him out when uh, his rage is up, right? And when it is down, right? Because it gives you vision of everyone around you. That is the more important part so you can pick the correct targets and it actually slows his attack speed when he's out of rage and at that point he actually is really low at attack speed right only one attack speed item of course he actually does have midas so i should say two but this item doesn't give you a particularly large amount of attack speed so with rage down shiva's nearly negates all of his damage and before I end the video, I want to wrap up the best play in the game. This is the one way you can counter Life Stealer. If you're not doing this, you're going to lose every single game. And it's to buy back and buy the wards. If you're a core player and you do not buy back and immediately buy the Observer and Sentry Ward, you are doing something wrong. I promise you. You're going to drop MMR exceedingly faster than you originally thought if you don't make this play in the late game. If you ever find yourself past the 40 minute mark and not buy backing to purchase the Observer Wards, then you're doing something wrong and you're probably losing to Life Stealer. But thank you guys for watching. I was happy to make this video and hopefully give a few helpful tips to counter probably the strongest hero of the patch. If you enjoy to learn anything at all, please do like and subscribe to help the channel grow. And if you have any questions or just comments about my typical voice cracks, let me know down in the comment section below.